Hey folks, how you doing? Good afternoon. Well, it's close to afternoon. I uh, had some things I had to do around here and uh, the time just ran away from me and I thought, oh, Christ, I didn't make my good morning video. <laughs> That's a mortal sin for me. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm having my, uh, probably my fourth cup of coffee. So, uh, whatever you're drinking right now, you're probably having a nice adult libation, but I'm having my fourth cup of coffee because I'm going down the road in just a few moments here. I figured I'd make a quick video and say good morning, good afternoon, whatever it might be in your neck of the woods right now. Let's put it down. Cheers! Uh, well, uh, today is Friday, May the 29th. We'll start with that. Uh, 2020 and uh, I went online yesterday I had to buy a new part for my uh, Keurig coffee maker you know where you put the, the Keurig cup in well when you put that in there and you pull down the handle it pops that little hole in the bottom of your Keurig cup if you ne never noticed that pick that up look at the bottom of it you know after you snap it and you get your fresh cup of coffee look at the bottom you'll see a little bit of a hole where the top the water comes through the top of the cup and it filters through the bottom and makes your you know your cup of coffee well my uh, my cup holder in the in the bottom of it where when you put your cup in for lack of a better word I'm gonna use a technical word it's got a little bit of a dick a dicky you know, just a little bit of a point in the bottom of this cup holder that when you push down on your cup, not only do, does it make a hole in the top, but it makes just a little bit of a, a hairpin hole in the bottom of the plastic cup. Well, my little pin, dicky, whatever you want to call it, it snapped. It wore out. So I had to go online. Luckily, it uh, you know, I, I just punched in on Google, uh, uh, Cure Coffee Machine Parts, or something to that effect. And it come up with a website. And so I bought this this hard piece of plastic, which has a, the pin in the bottom of it, where I can take out my old uh, hard piece of plastic. It, it comes right out when you wash your Cure Machine, you know. But uh, it cost me uh, just shy of $12.00. And right now they have a special going on, free shipping. So <laughs> I I uh, ordered the part, and it should be in here somewhere. I think they said uh, June second, give or take. So that's what I'm waiting on. So when I make my coffee now, what I got to do? I got to take a steak knife, a little knife that has a, a point on it, and in the bottom of the hard uh, cure cups that you get, I I just put a little bit of a hole in there. You know, and tweak it, turn it a little bit, just to make a just a little slight hole in the bottom of it. Then I put the Kira cup in my Kira machine, and I pull down on the handle because it's got to make that hole in the top, and it does fine. But uh, I wanted to get the <laughs> the part so I don't have to keep remembering because believe me, there's times I forget, and I go to make my coffee, and I'm standing there and waiting and waiting, and I go, what the hell? Excuse my French. Well, here I forgot to put the little hole in the bottom of it, so so it's worth the twelve bucks for me to to get it fixed, you know. All right, enough of that. Um, birthdays today. John F. K Kennedy's birthday is today. God rest his soul. Great president, uh, in my humble opinion. Uh, great Catholic president. <laughs> which has nothing to do with nothing, but uh, he was born in 1917, and uh, he died slash was assassinated in uh, 1963, and his net worth uh, in 1963 was approximately $10 million, and uh, he died at the, or was assassinated at the ripe young age of 46 years old of age, you know, God rest his soul, uh, if you take a moment today, take a moment of silence, 
and say a prayer for John F. Kennedy. And if you want to say a, a nice little prayer for the Kennedy family, go ahead, because uh, they've had some hardships. Some were not deserving, I'll tell you that. Uh, all right, I'll get off my political rant on, on the Kennedy Foundation. But uh, another birthday today is uh, LaToya Jackson's birthday. Now, I haven't heard much of uh, LaToya in many, many, many years, you know. Uh, she, uh, after she started, started getting some bad press way back in the day, she stopped uh, entertaining and uh, trying to get out there and make a, a living and a life for herself. I mean, she did quite well. She did all right. But she's uh, known as a singer, a songwriter, an actress, uh, an activist. Um, and her uh, age right now, today, is uh, 64 years young. Well, happy birthday, LaToya. And her net worth right now is $4 million. So, God bless you and happy birthday, LaToya. By the way, she was born in Gary, Indiana. I was going to go there today for the three-day weather forecast, but I thought, nah, I'm going to go to Brookline, Massachusetts. That's where JFK was born. Uh, today in Brookline, uh, <coughs> or should I say, <coughs> excuse me, the three-day weather forecast in Brookline, Massachusetts, uh, starting as of May the 29th, 2020, Friday, uh, 82 for a high, 66 for a low, and partly cloudy. Saturday in uh, Brookline, Mass, uh, 53, or excuse me, excuse me, 83 for a high on Saturday, 59 for a low, and partly cloudy on Saturday. Now let me go back to Friday in case I made a mistake here. On Friday in Brookline, Mass, 82 for a high, 66 for a low, and partly cloudy. Sometimes I get ahead of myself here. Bear with me. Sunday in Brookline, uh, 71 for a high, 48 for a low, and sunny on Sunday. So uh, three days, not too bad over there if you're going into uh, Brookline, uh, Massachusetts, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, you got a partly cloudy, partly cloudy, and a sunny. So that's not bad. So uh, enjoy yourself if you're going in that neck of the woods. Um, over here in Tower City, three-day weather forecast. Friday, today, 84 for a high. 62 for a low, and 80% chance of rain. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it hasn't rained yet, and it's been a, a fairly nice day. Uh, a little warm out there, but, you know, again, we're almost into June, you know. But uh, there's no rain as of yet, unless uh, the 80% chance of rain is uh, coming within the next hour or two. But right now, it's, uh, it's pretty nice out there. We got some vitamin D peeking through the clouds, you know. Saturday over here in uh, Tower City, 77 for a high, 49 for a low, and mostly sunny. Sunday over here in Tower City, 67 for a high, 44 for a low, and sunny again. So, um, you got two and two and a half days? Let's go with that. Because right now it's not raining. Uh, so, you got uh, today, as of now, and then Saturday and Sunday, Sunday you got uh, mostly sunny on Saturday and sunny on Sunday over here in Tower City or in this general area. So uh, I guess uh, two and a half days, not bad over here in Tower City. My grass has really grown. Jim, <laughs> I'll be looking for you next week. Yes, I will. I mean, with all this rain that we've had, and even my neighbor's grass. I mean, it's coming up. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, today is National Composting Day. RJ, Chrissy, I'm, I'm sure you guys are into it, so uh, do some nice composting out there if you haven't done so already. And I believe you told me in the past that uh, your framed out area in, a, in your back backyard you're doing composting. So uh, kudos to you guys. 
Oh, and a shout out to my friend uh, Mike Paletti. He posted on Facebook. Uh, he bought himself a, a nice Jeep. You know, uh, uh, good luck with that Jeep, brother. You know, and it looks sharp. I think it's like a cherry red. It's a nice looking Jeep. I did send him a, a message. More or less a ha-ha, but if he says, yeah, let's do it, we'll do it. I sent him a message when I seen that he bought this Jeep. I said, hey, Mike, brother, here's what we got to do now. I got a hitch on the back of my motorhome. Yes, I do. And all we got to do is get a tow dolly, and we'll tow that Jeep. And the two of us, well, the two and a half of us, can't forget about Sir Prince. We can do a road trip. So if you're game... I'm ready. Let's go. And even if you're not game, good luck with that Jeep. I'm glad you finally got it. From from the reading that and the posting from your friends and that, the, apparently you've been wanting a Jeep for a while. So I'm glad you got what you wanted. You know? Here's to you, brother. Maybe I'll start looking into a Jeep. You're the second person. The third person that has gotten a Jeep that I, I have known of, all right? Uh, the, the first Jeep was my uh, my boss. Uh, his, well, we'll go by his name, Jason. Uh, he bought a Jeep uh, a couple years back, and a nice nice little Jeep, you know. But then again, uh, my, uh, I'll call him my son-in-law, because he is. Leo got his Jeep, nice-looking Jeep, just a few months ago. And now, uh, Michael Paletti, Mike, he got a Jeep. So maybe I gotta look into that. And maybe I gotta, uh, um, use my, uh, Subaru as a trade in and get me a little Jeep and a tow dolly and I can take my motor home. Whether it's gonna be this one, the Class A or the Class C, whenever that might come about, you know? Just a thought. Okay, that's about it. I burnt my lip yesterday. I don't know if you can see it. Right on the top there. It blistered up. I made me a, uh, in the slow cooker, a chuck roast. And it turned out awesome. I had two servings. That's how good it was. You know, <laughs> I gave myself a pat on the back. That's the second time I, I did a slow and low chuck roast. I never made one before, you know, this first one that I made. And then, then I bought one yesterday, or... The other day, over there at Marlin Markets, I got a nice little, I don't know, between a three and a five, I, I'm going to say closer to a five pound chuck roast. And I, uh, you know, seasoned it up and I, I put it in my, my uh, crock pots, you know, slow and low. And I did what their direction said, uh, do not put any juice in there, you know, put it on slow and low. After I seared it in my uh, uh, cast iron frying pan. I seared it on both sides and on, of course, the edges, you know, put a nice sear on it. And I had it seasoned up with some garlic powder, some uh, uh, onion powder, some celery salt, you know. And uh, I, I put some uh, black uh, peppercorns in there, you know, and a, a bay leaf. That was just my addition. I put that in it. And... Uh, I put it in my uh, crock pot on slow and low. Uh, I let it go for, uh, I want to say, maybe three and a half, four hours. And sure enough, there was juice that built up in there, you know. And of course, then I flipped it. And uh, in my freezer, I had uh, some red and green peppers that I had already diced up and chopped up. I, I saved that in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Uh, that's my uh, soup fixings, all right? So I took this uh, Ziploc bag out of my red and green peppers that were already diced up. And I, you know, crumbled and, and I got handfuls of that. And I, I put that in the crock pot on top of my, uh, excuse me, my chuck roast. And then I went into uh, the other side, excuse me, the other side of my freezer. I had some uh, chopped up celery, you know, and I... Uh, took that out. It was in a Ziploc bag, frozen, of course, you know, and I crumbled it all up, and I, I got me a couple, two, three nice handfuls of that, and I put that in my crock pot, and then I went into the refrigerator part, and I had diced up a, 
sweet Fidelia onions and I took two or three handfuls of that and I put that in I put the lid back on the top for uh, maybe about an hour so it would, you know start to thaw out and after an hour I took the lid off and uh, I stirred up my concoction of all my ingredients that I put in there make sure that it got around the sides of uh, you know my chuck roast and then I uh, took my fork and a spatula and I gently flipped it over because by this time it was starting to get a little tender and I didn't want it to break apart just yet so when I flipped it over all my uh, uh, onions and green and red peppers and celery it kind of went to you know to the center kind which was fine so I I laid my uh, uh, chuck roast on top of that and then I did scoop with a spoon uh, some of my other ingredients that were in the chuck roast around it and I put, kind of put that on the top, you know. Then I uh, put my lid back on, on my crack pot, crock pot and I uh, let it go for another two or three hours and man, it was smelling good, I'm telling you. Um, and, and I believe, oh, I had potatoes in there, excuse me. I, ha I had some... Uh, Russet potatoes that I, I at least, at least quartered up, if not more than that. And I put that around my uh, the chuck roast uh, a couple hours afterwards, after it started to cook. Because I didn't want it in there in the beginning, because I didn't want mushy potatoes. Not at that point, okay? But after it was all said and done, after about, uh, I'd say maybe six hours, I was figuring eight, but... Uh, by uh, six hours, she was ready to et. Yeah. <laughs> and I had two servings of uh, my uh, slow and low uh, uh, chuck roast. It was really good. Uh, if you have any questions on that or if you need some information, send me a private message and I'll get it to you. And uh, I, I did buy some uh, jarred uh, beef gravy if I needed it, but I didn't need it. I had plenty of juice. So I got the jarred beef gravy, and I got some uh, uh, beef stock for something else, if and when I need it, you know. So there it is. Okay, that's enough of uh, everything that I've been talking about. I got about 18 minutes into this uh, video. Unscripted, by the way, except for, you know, this stuff. So I hope you guys have a great day today. I'm looking into the, I am really getting a, a bad itch going on here, you know. I want to do some traveling real soon here. I'm getting itchy. I'm ready to back that mo motorhome out of my uh, backyard there and uh, take it for a ride. Yes, I am. I know I got something coming up here in uh, October. Depending if I have nothing else going on, okay? <laughs> Got that? <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about. I will let you know about uh, two, maybe three weeks before the travel date of uh, going to Salem in the motorhome. Uh, if that's not uh, enough time for you guys, I'm sorry, but I, I gotta wait and see what's going on. And I can understand why, you know, you'd be itchy. You wanna make sure that you're going up that way, you know, I, you want me to confirm the motorhome, because if not, from what I'm seeing, going to Salem, Massachusetts, you know, uh, over Halloween, I'm sure uh, the campground and uh, hotels are all going to be booked up. So, uh, you know, I uh, understand your dilemma, but you also got to understand my dilemma. So if that ain't going to work for you, you know, uh, Put your booking down on, on a hotel room. That's all I can say, okay? All right. That's it, folks. Have a great day today. Have a great weekend. Cheers in Ostrovia. Lucille, good morning. And all my friends and family members, my uh, son, my daughter-in-law, uh, my daughter, my son-in-law, <laughs> my nieces and nephews and grandchildren, Brianna. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. Your pap loves you. Yes, he does. And Sir Prince, where is he now? 
Oh, he's on his uh, little therapeutic mattress that we have for him here. He's doing okay. You know, I'm giving him his uh, his uh, uh, hemp oil and his uh, turmeric, turmeric uh, gravy. I'm giving that to him and uh, knock on wood. He's getting around. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Keep him in your prayers if you would, okay? All right. I'll talk to you guys later on. God bless you. Have a great day. I'm going to punch you all out on three. Is that some nice background scenery back there? Hey, Lloyd, how you doing? One more time. Cheers in Estonia. Have a great day, folks. Peace. I'll talk to you later on. God bless you. I'm three now. One, two. Have a great day. Take care of one another. See ya. Smile.